Passe to the cast and the curious. I am Sarah Griffith. I've never seen these movies before, and I am shocked, shocked by this. I, Jesus Christ. I'm not going to get over that. I'm Bridget Greenberg, and I have seen these movies many times, and am a big fan. And we just watched the third installment of the Fast and Furious Ugh. Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift, a Star Wars story. What? Okay. All right. I every uh, prediction I had last week, by the way, fucking yeah, wrong. Yeah, was very wrong. Because I was like, "Cool, Paul Walker, known tuna lover, yeah, is going to love <laughs> Tokyo." Um, guess what? Officer Brian can't even go fucking abroad it's- because he's not in this film at all. Yeah, at all. Uh-huh. Do they even name drop him? No, I don't think he's mentioned. At all. Wow. Uh, yeah, you kept making predictions about him, and I didn't have the heart to tell well, because you. because why in God's green fucking earth would I think for two seconds that he wasn't going to be in this one? Hey, that's what we all said back in 03. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Okay. I... I uh... It, what was it? It was like a little bit less than an hour in that I finally resigned. It was like, hey, I don't think Paul Walker's in this movie. Yeah, we were watching it and I think it was like 51 and a half minutes in. You turn to me and you go, this is when I gave up hope that <laughs> they're going to no, be in this no movie. One. At least yeah. like the last one, I was like, yeah, where's Vin Diesel? And early on, you're like, hey, Vin Diesel's not in this movie. No, I wanted to see how long it would take you to figure it out. Jesus Christ. And then... Surprise, who's this? Who's in this movie? Vin yeah. fucking Diesel. Yep. Which was, okay, one of the more satisfying. We're jumping way, way, way ahead. Yeah, yeah. But the, I full on cheered if you're watching, when I saw Dom. Yeah, if you're watching these movies in time with these podcasts. Yikes, yikes one, for you. That was a mistake. What a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, two, yeah, we're talking about the spoiler alert for the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, way spoilers. But I did full on cheer. That was so yeah. exciting because I was, I was like, excited oh, cool. for you in that it's, moment. I have been watching Tokyo Drift this whole film and now I get to watch The Fast and the Furious. Yeah, I, I was excited for you for that moment. Uh, that whole time. Because it was an exciting moment when we all watched okay, it. Okay, the yeah. theaters must have erupted. That was like when yeah. Luke Skywalker popped up at the end of The Force Awakens. Yeah, uh, it was... It was very exciting. Awesome. We, we, Fucking awesome. Because at the time, we had no idea Vinny D was coming back. And can you imagine my surprise? Yeah. When I had always like, oh, well, I guess this is just going to be like a different movie with different people. Yeah. And then, boom, family. But yeah, let's uh, let's let's talk about this movie. Can, let's start with the first well, 20 minutes of this film. I want to hear you describe... Describe the plot of this movie? Yeah, describe what you saw. Boy, oy, oy, did I see a film. Okay, so basically a 35-year-old high schooler mm-hmm. yeah. named John Sean. We couldn't really tell. <laughs> Sean, though, right? It's it Sean? is Sean. Yeah. Okay. It is Sean. He is busted as a juvenile racing, and the cops are like, well, you can either go to yeah. prison and suffer the consequences of you breaking your crimes. Or get your life flip turned upside down. And for real, or you can move to Tokyo with your dad who is stationed there in the Navy or he used to be and he just stayed? Yeah, unclear. I think he works for the Navy. I think he's like naval intelligence over there. You know, he's not... Can I tell you that's how my grandparents met? My grandfather was stationed in Osaka. Kobe, I think it was. Yeah. But he came back to America. Yeah. This dad stayed. This dad stayed. Stayed. He was living his life in Japan. Uh, I guess. We only see him like... We saw him in his sad little apartment with the prostitute. That's what we saw. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that happens. And then he's like, you need to go to high school. Yeah. Um, I don't know how old you are, but go to high school. Understanding any aspect of this non-Latin based language. Yeah. So, truly, it is like... Nothing. Right. Nothing. The dad didn't even have like the not even foresight. Flashcard. Yeah, foresight to not even like an itchy knees on chi. Like well, nothing. He didn't even have the foresight to call the school and say, "Hey, my son doesn't know a lick of Japanese." Hey, the super Anglo-Saxon looking kid that's walking in the doors. Yeah, he's mine. Go easy on him. He's a criminal. Right. Do he's ha- a criminal? I don't know if I. I know it's called ESL English as a second language, but like yeah. you have a. a JSL class you can stick him in something uh, yeah anything so, yeah because there's no so point of him going yeah, to so school he's like then. at the Japanese high school I guess just like immersing himself yep in the language immersion therapy um and then somehow it 
like lo and behold, everyone in the fucking school loves to race cars and it's like, yeah. oh shit. But they race cars special. They do a thing called the drift. Uh-huh. Which from my interpret literally I thought the movie describe was actually- dr- Yeah, describe drifting. See, the movie did this really smart where the- he was like, What's drifting? And they're like, Look. And so it's like it's a visual thing, so you yeah. have to say it out loud. Yeah. Because to explain it out loud, it has to be like, it's when you're going really fast and then in lieu of like accelerating into a turn you like clutch your brake and allow it must be like a two wheel drive situation because yeah. like your first two wheels break and the back two wheels continue to move because of tri- centripetal force sure i'm really doing a good job of explaining this i mean you could be very wrong i have no idea i don't know how, i've never this isn't a real thing i've i'm well, doing donuts is a real thing, and that's drifting. Okay, sure, but they're not calling it drifting, or unless they are. I think Listen, they are. I've been wrong before. Yeah, I think they are. Anyway, and so they get into, like, there's, there's this hot girl, but her <laughs> boyfriend is a member of the Yakuza, yep. and it's like, they get into beef, and Bow Wow is there, and I guess he's, like, selling people bullshit technology and shoes or whatever, and basically, they get into some sh- Oh, Han is there. I liked Han. <laughs> Han is there. Han is there. He's he, introduced. And he's like, yes. Yeah. And he's like, dude, I'm cool with the Yakuza. And I do a little thing on my own fucking time. Right. Do Which a is. Side stealing. Yeah. St- uh, side stealing from the Yakuza. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Han's an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then. Yeah, basically they get into a bit of a kerfuffle. Han dies, which is like the one thing about this franchise that I know because so many people yeah. talk about this. Which is very funny that that is the one thing you know. But everyone, I feel like so many people are like, no, yeah, you should have kept Han around. I think I, I think thought Han was around for like hashtag. two or three movies. Justice for this Han is, like is a hashtag. Just, yes, Han is in this movie for like 40 minutes. Yeah. Anyway, he explodes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Then that car some, blows up real good. Then there's good. some fuck shit. And so then Sean John goes over to the goddamn Takashi and company and mm-hmm. goes up to his uncle and is like, listen, I'm going to race your nephew, winner take all. I get the girl and also like the Yakuza's off my back now. And yep. he wins. And then it's like, dude, you're the new DK. There's somebody who wants to race you. And I'm like, thank God. Thank God. And then I cheer and then credits. Yeah. That's the movie. Cheers, cheers your coronas and absolutely and the credits. I, I want to specifically just take time to talk about like the first 20 minutes of this movie because I maybe never recovered from the opening chase sequence between him. Okay, well, for starters, we had to make a note of this. The high school it's, yeah. mascot are the ducks. Right. And very visibly, in like one of actually, which is saying a lot for the Fast and Furious franchise, yeah. one of the more problematic moments of this franchise. Yeah. They are... Yeah, the shot is like a... It's a weird shot um, where through the security camera footage that they're watching, you see... So you, yeah, you can you, see like the rally flags and stuff. Yeah. And it says, go ducks, understandable. Kill the Indians. Yeah, and then immediately cuts to uh, these Beating teenagers. Beating like an indigenous person version of pinata yeah it's like we start off like this is the first three minutes okay if i i like to play the game if these movies know what they're doing okay here uh that's a big if yes it's a big if but um if you want to be generous we can follow the line that they knew what they were doing and since that school was everyone there was shitty and they were like bad people that was kind of showing like, okay, he's a fish out of water, but he knows who he is and he's not going to, you know, yeah, go he in knows for that their racist is, bullshit. Yeah. That this um, is like deeply troubling. Right. Like it, it shows his juxtaposition with this crowd. Okay. I mean, he made some comments later about Japanese food that I was like, all right. Yes. All right. But, uh, that is, yeah. Uh, yeah. His, his ignorance about Japanese food, I do find far less sinister than. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Very true. Very, very true. So then. I mean, I'm not ranking. Yes. Uh, uh, in a general sense, though, and we'll talk about this for sure, this yeah. movie is horny. Yeah. Justin well, Lin well, could th- not get enough. Japanese of, teens. <laughs> oh my. Well, Amer, the fucking first yeah, chick we see, oh yeah. she like flips up her skirts. So we could see her little underwear and like yeah. her bra. It's like, okay, I, this woman I know is almost 40. Definitely. For but sure. She's playing like a like 
maybe 15, 16 year old. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, we did that for a long time and. Yeah, where we made like teens, teens and these like, movies look yeah. sexy and stuff. It's like, I know like teens are sexual and we shouldn't like. Yeah. There's a fine line though. Yeah, I think we just stopped making teens hot. No, I can't say that because Riverdale. Riverdale. But I think Euphoria is doing a good job of like, look, these teens are hot they're, and they're having sex, but they're not they're exploiting. Kids. Yeah, it's not for you. Yeah, it's not for you to like get your yeah. jimmies off on. Yeah. This, no, though. This movie's sure. uncomfortable. Yeah. So they agree to race in the model home. <laughs> like this fucking oh, yeah, this neighborhood. Is, this, yeah, which is na- made built, yeah. Which, by the way, this whole time, I thought they were in, like, literally SoCal. I thought that was, like, the OC. It's hard to tell where they something. are. No, well, they all have accents. He's and clearly... conflicting accents, Conflicting to say accents. Because he's not from there, right, whatever that town. Around. Yeah, so he's but not he from that town. he has such an accent. It's like he's got, more, like constantly got yeah. deep in the bottom of his jaw yeah well he's uh he did he wasn't sling blade he's from alabama yeah, can you please give the little mini rundown of this actor and uh, what the hell is his name that's a oh um, man jim mccreary uh yeah he is from alabama well I, shit uh which is i think what that accent is because uh, i think on his <laughs> definitely his name is lucas black and uh wow that's actually a pretty cool movie star name it is a good name for someone who's not a movie star outside of this right and then did nothing else he um turned down a part in uh the very popular movie uh 1998's horse whisperer because of course i'm familiar yes of course we all are we all love that that was a best picture for sure yeah um he turned out a part of it because they wanted him to change his accent in Wood It. So something is telling me he oh he sticks my. his guns on this accent. God. Ugh. Yeah. He uh, is so... So he, for a bad actor, that's a lot of integrity to be holding on to. Truly. He's uh, not good. He's he's very bad at acting. Also for someone who literally looks like Eminem in half of the times that they have like a, I mean, an ECU on him. It was, it He's was like styled. Yes. And it was like in that era. It, where that it's was a 2003. Look. So every, he every white boy looked like Eminem, but he literally yes. like has the same color eyes. Yeah. The same like kind of pasty skin. There's a resemblance for sure. For sure. Yeah. And they get in that race, which by the way, the winner gets me, this little fucking girl, girl which yeah. I thought was kind of cool. Yeah. A little bit. I don't think. But then she kind of bitched out during the race. I, and I was like, oh. Yeah. Again, um, I'm going to flip on my argument of these movies know what they're doing. Okay. Because that I'm like, yeah, that is cool. And, you know, you do that for you and not for sure. them. They're not making it. You do that. You're doing that all on your own. Great. But I don't think I don't that's know. how these movies meant that. And then all three of them die in horrible car accidents. And then like we the, cut to them sitting upright and conscious. The hospital. Yeah, they're not even at a in a station. It. Yeah, they're not. They're not e- did, they didn't even go into the concussion tent. No, they're not even in the ER. They're in the no, waiting room. And they have like butterfly band-aids on. Yeah. It's like, oh boy, my head hurts. It's like, no, I saw those that couple ram yeah. into like a pylon, a I, cement pylon. Yeah. They should be dead. <laughs> yeah, he flips his car violently at least six times. They if Han flips his car and then it immediately explodes, those three kids at the top of this movie are dead. And then Officer Brian shows up on the scene. What do we got here, boys? And then it's like, they were racing. It was like racing. And then the Fast and the Furious colon Tokyo Drift starts. Is my fan fiction. Okay, that's your pitch for Tokyo Drift 3, Tokyo Drift 2? Even more Tokyo (laughs) Drifting. (laughs) (laughs) Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift. Two Tokyos, two Furious. 3.2. A Star Wars story. A Star Wars story. Um, and then it's like the mom comes into the police station and mm-hmm. is like going to try to fuck her way out of a conviction for her son. Not a conviction, but like an arrest for her son. Yeah. My favorite line is like, we're going to try him as an adult. And and it's impossible not to think. Yeah. Because he's 32 years old. They really have cast the oldest man yeah. in America. He, that looks like a middle-aged man that is a yeah. caricature of like a, a man entering his early middle age jesus christ um and so yeah it's like uh we're gonna move again because i guess yeah. they move every time he like gets in trouble which, breaks the law yeah which seems like a lot so he's a 
piece of shit because he's with us like he's living with his single mother who's yeah. just trying her best he's literally <laughs> just like doing everything she can and he and knows so she's like, no i got a different idea for you and then all of a sudden he's on a plane to tokyo yeah i wish that could work for me that every time right. i get in trouble it's like you know we're shipping your family off to osaka peace yeah like, okay no problem no problem. If it's in between jail time or I just moved to a different country, you better fucking believe I'll just move to a different country. So he's in Tokyo. Yeah. Meets up with his dad. And then we get started once again. They're in high school. I uh, Here's, yeah. okay, issue. This is not an order of importance, but just as I think of it, number it's a, one. You can't rate importance. Why are importance. they in high school? Why do they have to be in high school? Could he not just be like an adult man who's like on the lam and he's like, you know what? I got to dip out of here because the cops are looking for me. I'm going to get on a flight and, you know, go stay with my pops in Tokyo. Yeah. Uh, that is. Why do they have the, why do they have a naval it, officer in Tokyo? It's just for one. Well, it's an island. <laughs> yeah. But like, why is a naval officer stationed uh, like, in like the middle I, of Tokyo? I, I feel like that is not that uncommon. I Tokyo guess. being a friend country and near uh, an enemy country. I, ju- I just, uh, yeah. I, All right. I, I feel like they're, I don't, I don't know. Well, it is, but I he feel doesn't like seem it's, like he's active duty. He might, I, I feel like he's I working mean, he's like. he's wearing a, that shirt at one point. Yeah, I feel. Which tells you I everything I feel like he works now. for the Navy in Japan. Maybe he's doing like security tech. Right. I think he like works a desk job in the Navy. <laughs> Cars. Cars. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's got an abacus on his desk. He's working hard for yeah. the U.S. government. Which, by the way, the theory we've been working on that, like the FNFCU, there are no laws. There's no enforcement of laws. Yeah, really was expanded in this one when the police were like, "Oh, well, if you're going too fast, nah, we're not." You're, you, oh just, yeah, they don't follow you if it, the, the cars. The rule in Tokyo is if you are going fast enough one time, you are allowed to break every law. There are no yeah. laws for you. You can drag race. Tokyo you can almost, is you can drift through a crowded city street full of pedestrians. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You can endanger lives of hundreds. Mowing them down one by one. And just, that mountain is all yours. DK Mountain. DK Mountain. Which is literally a level in Mario Kart. They may as well have raced on the Rainbow Road in this film. That uh, I would have bought. I'd be like, oh, of course. Wait, and you can drift in Mario Kart. Drifting in Mario Kart is a key. So oh, yeah, well, let's combine these universes. Honestly, that's what I think Fast and Furious is going to be. It's going to turn into... Since clearly my predictions su- are yeah. out the goddamn window. Yeah, we'll we'll get to what your predictions for the future are. I, I have none. Let me later. let me let me spoiler alert. I have none. We'll make you make some. Paul Walker will be back. There's one. You think? I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know at this point. I don't know what to believe. I don't know what to trust. Um, I was absolutely flummoxed this entire but what film. You can trust in these movies. They are fast. Is the driving, and that's why, like, I've I've defended uh, this movie on Gamefully Unemployed's best bad movie ever because. One, with hindsight of what the series turns in, like, with hindsight being what it is. Yeah. It is a good movie. Okay. It it was very confusing at the time it came out, but I think um, as you get further in the franchise, you can look back on this movie fondly. Yeah, so, question. I don't remember <laughs> yeah. seeing the trailer for this. I didn't watch the trailer before I watched the movie, so I literally was like, what the mm-hmm. fuck? Did you guys, like, know going in, like, oh, it's like a different Fast and Furious yeah, from what I remember, I was like young. This was actually yeah, this the, was a while. This was the first one I saw in theaters. Okay, um, so I wasn't like I I don't think I can really speak to like the franchise at the point, and like the expectations. Yeah, yeah, but I remember it like it being kind of disappointing because you're like, what is that? Like it it was such a break from the universe. Yeah, you didn't and think, I, it, and I do remember this movie being like culturally significant. Well, yeah, it is so 2003. These movies are really Actually, good at showing the time. I think this one's 06. Oh, I think you might be right. I think the last one was 03. The last one was 03. This one's 06. Because they, yeah. they, they have razor flip yeah. phones. They yeah. have flip phones. They have razor flip phones. Yes. Uh, yeah, they have iPods. Because I do think this was when, I can't remember who the designer was, but they came out with that collection where they really highlighted like the Harajuku culture. Yeah. It, and then it like was when Stefani latched. Yeah. I want to say it was like Gautier, but I don't think it is that. No, because that's a band. No, Jean-Paul Gaultier. Oh, yes. You I th- fucking 
white trash, don't yep. know anything about high fashion. No, but like it was around this time that like, I just know. I my- remember sixth grade, all of a sudden, like Japanese yeah. things were like really popular i think this movie hopped on that bandwagon yes i don't think this movie they capitalized on yeah it. i i think it uh yeah i i think they were got like it. this is hot right now got it got it got um it. and know who else is hot little bow wow let's get him in these movies wow what a yeah, great bow what, wow is uh, certainly there. in these all over these when he sat down at the lunch table yeah i nearly i can't believe you didn't know chair. that i, I I am continually shocked about how little you know the, about these movies. The way that I said what shook the apartment. Yeah. That you were shocked. crazy. Yeah. Uh, I'm not like for real. Everything that happens shocking. in these movies is like. It's shocking. I'm a baby. Yeah. And this I, is the first movie I've ever seen. Yeah. Because as someone, you are a fan <laughs> of franchise films. Oh, I, yeah, I know so much. I am not typically a franchise uh, person, but these I love them. Um, Here's the thing, though: the franchises I like, I think classically have like a really deep nerd following. Yes, and these movies, I know nerds love these movies. I don't mean to discount the nerds who do. Yeah, I would Thank not you. put them on par with like Star Trek, Doctor Who. No, it's a, it's a different scene. Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's, it's like, a different. It, it's a different demographic. It, it's it's my it's my demographic. Well, it's like it's the same well, like Miami. Miami, yeah. yeah. So it's it's in the same universe of, of like you like James Bond, yes. <laughs> like it's yes. it's this is dad franchise, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I am son who's a disappointment franchise, yeah. Um, son the, who stays in his room all day franchise, yeah. This is this is a franchise for uh, this is a the social. boys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fast and Furious for the, the boys. boys, yeah. But. Like I said, I will defend this movie for two reasons. And it's one is an argument that I have to make when you have hindsight on the franchise. Yes. Two, the driving in this movie is some of the best in. I, I want to say I would put it up there in the franchise. Some of the best driving we get in these movies. The driving fucks. Yeah. Hard. When they when they do the first drift sequence and you get oh that like super slow down God. of him just missing the wall. So good. Ooh. It was that final yeah. time. It was like a bird's eye shot and he's like going through the parking, like up the ramp oh. to the finale. Yeah. That was fucking ice cold. And they do a lot of these shots where as they're drifting, the camera, like the car drifts into camera and then yeah. whoever's driving just kind of like looks down the barrel. Oh. It looks fucking cool. It's cool. So cool. Such good use of slow motion. There, there were several times that out loud I said, this is cool. Yeah. The coolest for me though, peak driving was when Han drifted around that car of like the oh, two hot yeah. girls. Yeah. Oh my God. That was so fucking awesome. And then they pass off their number. Yeah. I love that. That I is love cool. That. Hashtag justice for Han. Cause that guy was cool. That, he's suave as he, fuck. Honest to God. He Always was probably eating. my favorite character in the movie. Yeah. Closely followed by two. Well, not closely, but in the number two position would be the chick. In, in this movie. Are you yes. talking about it in Tokyo Drift yeah, specifically? Just in Tokyo Drift. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cause compared to. The, the, yeah, I was going to say what in... That's insane. No, in this movie, Han number one, number two, the chick whose name I never caught. I don't think they say it out loud. Or if they do, it, it comes from like Guttermouth, Alabama, yeah. what's his ass. So I have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> and he's butchering every pronunciation he could possibly yeah, get but to. That's interesting because does she have a personality? Here's what I liked about her. She seemed... She was really, really working hard in this film because she was working opposite someone who is not an actor. Right. Like just not, he's not an actor, period. No, he's he's very, he's very bad. Uh, and I <laughs> think that she actually is like a character that kind of makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there were moments where she was the voice of reason. Mainly yeah. when she was saying, everyone stop. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I was like, yes, listen to her. Yeah, but that's kind of like, I don't know. I feel like that's a shitty role to give a okay, woman. Okay, Bridget, who's your second favorite character in this movie? I will remind <laughs> Little you. Little Bow Wow, ch- God damn it! Oh, I guess Bow Wow Lil, is all right. Lil Bow Wow might be my first. No, no Han, 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 Han. I do love Han. Han I is- like the uncle, Takashi's uncle. I'm yeah. not going to call him DK. I know everyone else in the movie is calling him DK, but... His name is Takashi. Yeah. I think you only need a ranking of two and it's on a little Bow Wow and that's it. That's it. 
That's all we need. That's it. Um, yeah. And I don't know if you picked up on the joke in the franchise, but in every shot, Han is always eating. Okay. It's I like, just saw this movie for the first it's time. It's like right a now. Brad Pitt in Oceans oh, movies. Well, I'm way familiar with that. You know that. You oh, know you're those speaking ones. my language. Yeah, where he's always eating. Are you shitting me? Yes. Oh my God. I'm going to watch Ocean's Eleven tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Uh, but yeah, the driving in this movie is Rules. what makes up for it. Because it's insane. And I also love when they put together the car, his car at the yeah, end. Yeah, that was cool. That American, that good old American muscle car. When, they, when characters were in cars and going fast and furiously, I was yes. all in. When yes. they were Tokyo drifting, I was all in. Uh-huh. When they were in school and talking to one another, I was like, where is Paul Walker? Yeah. Eating tuna. <laughs> Eating tuna sashimi yeah. somewhere out of frame. Uh, I don't think Paul Walker's ever had... I think Paul Walker, uh, Brian O'Connor, has only had sun-kissed tuna. That is true. He's a canned tuna guy. He's a canned sure. tuna guy can only. Tuna he guy. eats like a cat. Yeah. Uh, well, he works... He's he's, a, he's part of the feds, you know? They yeah. eat kind of like, you know, spam and like that kind of things that are... right non-perishable like you yeah. can eat that shit for you can years. eat it on a steak out it can be eat yeah. it warm you can in have a trunk that, you can have that tuna sandwich with the devil ice cappuccino oh uh, whatever the fuck they drink in the my first movie. god no he <laughs> drinks like two sodas yeah uh, <laughs> uh and yeah as a sandwich with the crust cut off yes um on white bread i will never forget this is like the first five minutes of the first movie i will never forget there are little things about these movies that you hold on to you and know what? love. That's kind of the fun about franchise films yeah. is that you kind of lock in this stupid ass shit. Right. That's for nobody. And like, yeah, that no one else cares about Max Rebo, but I love that yeah. guy. That little blue angel. Yeah. Salacious yeah. Bikram. Love him. Oh, the whole job of gang, honestly. Uh, yeah. They're fun. They're cool people. <laughs> if one I, of them. This is not going to turn into your thing. We're Damn doing it. my thing, I was thing, really Sarah. trying. I was really trying to steer, pun intended, the conversation to my thing. Sarah. Uh, Sarah, you're doing a podcast about my thing. Come on. <laughs> but I will say, imagine a Fast and Furious scene where they're driving and they like turn the corner uh-huh. and the camera pans with it. And then you see Salacious Beaker. I'm like, <laughs> would you not love that crossover? I would, but you can just put that in the pod racing in Phantom Menace. Mm, you know, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. That is what you're I'm thinking, thinking of. You're thinking pod racing. Uh, uh, this is, there is no pod racing in these movies yet. They only yet. have Nas racing. Nas racing. Which they did have one scene with Nas. Yeah. I was missing the Nas. I'm telling, I'm like, they were, I didn't realize how much I had fallen in love with the other two movies. They sneak up on you. That it's like, all of a sudden, they're not in this one. I'm like, where, where's Michelle Rodriguez? Where are my friends? Yeah. I mean, this is a movie where we introduce stuff, not just driving fast. But driving fu- They are furious. furious. I will give um, this movie a lot of credit. When they are driving fast, they are also driving furiously. Like, it is no, like, hey, friendly competition. Here's my pink slip, whatever. It's like, no, I'm going to pull out a gun and shoot you in the face because right. I'm a member of the Yakuza. Yeah, it's a, it's maybe like a an eight on the fast, seven or eight on the fast scale, but a 10 on the furious scale. Oh, this is so a, furious. Yeah, this Although is where they start. Surprisingly, yeah. not incredibly violent. No. And well, the grizzly car wrecks. I like how in, oh, in this universe every car accident yeah. resulted in death. Uh should have. They should have. But in this universe, hitting your car is like bumping your shoulder against another person. The first like, race in, when he borrows Han's car to like and oh by the way, the fact that he borrows the car and then Bow was like, Bro, do you even know what DK means? And then he has to explain like drifting and then immediately he gets into this race. I'm like Dude, I think if my friend of that I met that day was like, yo, they do this extra special maneuver that you've never even heard of, and that guy you're racing is the best, I'd be like, um, I'm just actually going to withdraw from this race. Right. Also, when he was in a, a parking garage. Yes. Did he think this was going to be a 10-second race? I... Uh, I, I don't know. Where this, were they going to go? This fuck it. You also, know what? This, now, this would be a different movie, seriously, if the main character was like a likable person. Yeah. I'm also now occurring to me it's now occurring to me that uh his nickname is dk words in a english al- letters in an english alphabet oh yeah for words in english a language yeah. that they don't i mean they speak it but yeah wouldn't be an uh it would, a it, no nickname. they would not they would not do that no but these movies are dumb and that's why we love them yeah uh, um the the romantic absolutely no guarantee that all those actors were japanese 
Oh, of course not. None whatsoever. Uh, but the the gorgeous romantic driving sequence. Oh Didn't my. you love that? The Now, you, not to steer it back into my thing, but I did say out loud, this is Attack of the Clones. Yeah, that part is, yeah. Where you have like an outstandingly beautiful young woman yeah. actually delivering like her acting 101 monologue. Yeah, trying. At least trying. Yeah, putting an effort. Yeah. I, but again, I will say to her credit, like it's hard to act up against nothing at a all. A brick wall, yeah. And in the times where I've had to work against someone who I'm like, dude, absolutely nothing. It's like you have to overcompensate and like yeah. do their work too, which makes you look back ultimately because it looks like you're acting. It looks like you're working. I mean, they also gave her nothing to do. Like she no. doesn't have a personality. Like she can drive and she's, she talks more than Eva Mendes does in the last one. She does. She's like cool, but we don't know. Like just because she doesn't think he's a total idiot. Like that's the only reason... Yeah, I also miss the she whole... She hangs with the boys. And, like, her mom died, and also Takashi's dad died. It, like, there's a lot of parents who are, like, out of the picture and some backstory. Well, yeah, that's like, how they know each other. Right, is because they're all taken in by... Uh, Takashi's Kana- grandmother. Oh, Obasan. Yes. But who's the uncle's name? Like, Ka- Yakuza man. Kanata? Ka- Yakuza man. Fuck, I don't know. Yeah. Uh... The Don't. bad guy. Yeah, yeah, the bad guy who But the one appears. who's like, you know what, I respect you, kid. Right, the big boss. Yes. You see him in two scenes. <laughs> yeah, and at the last, no joke, 25 minutes. Yeah, and he, he does nothing except for agree to Sean's whims. Yeah. Uh, he, that's the only oh, thing yeah, he does. like, big fucking tough gangster. Sean rolls up with, like, only, like, 5,000 yen. Right. And uh, then he's <laughs> like, all right, I'll listen to the kid. And not only... Does he like let him in and like have a conversation? He speaks English to the kid, which I was like, I, that's a big sign of respect that he would speak your language instead of you having to speak his, yeah. which I was grateful because I could not listen to that guy speak Japanese. Anymore. Yeah. Attempt to, which he learns kind of overnight poorly, uh, which I guess, I mean, he's Here's, immersed. Okay. Talking about people who have significant brain damage, <laughs> <laughs> not only has this kid been his cage has been rattled. Definitely. Oh, for sure. Definitely. I mean, everybody. He also has had to move to all these different towns. When has he ever had time for like any kind of education whatsoever? He no. reads like two chapters of Huck Finn at one school and then goes somewhere else. Yeah. He's just reading the same two chapters of Huck Finn over it's and over like, again. Yeah. It's like, oh, and yeah, that's no, I read this part of the Scarlet Letter. Yeah. Well, he doesn't need education when you have cars. Also, he did all this in the 80s back when he was actually a high school When he teenager. was actually in high school. Like, when he was actually a teenager. I love uh, the Grease parallels you can make in this Very, movie. Yes, that is. But here's the thing. Grease has the goddamn decency to be a fun musical. Yes. I, yeah. <laughs> they <laughs> like, just, at least they, singing is they, happening. They just gave us one banger song. Okay. This song mm-hmm. makes the ludicrous Too Fast, Too Furious song yeah. sound like dookie splashing in water <laughs> yeah this song that song goes the teriyaki boys not great we can rebrand but the t-boys um fucking killer in between episode two too fast too furious and this i have listened to that song like conservatively fifty thousand. so that is the second thing you know about these movies that the song <laughs> fucking bangs yeah that that is a great song i know three songs from this franchise the too fast too furious song this song, and then see you again. Right, whatever that the song Charlie Puth one, yeah, was on the radio all the time. I can't wait to like hear the beginning of that song blast, and then hear you just peel out of my apartment <laughs> when we're done. Oh, you better believe I'm just, as I'm driving away, you're gonna be like, ding, 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 and just because yeah. I do drive a Honda, I will tear it the fuck up. Yeah, your Honda CRV, <laughs> absolutely, yeah, is getting peeled on out of yeah, here. Yeah, got a Hemi in there. <laughs> I don't know anything about uh, engines. Yeah, I don't think I know uh, about engines I know from Joe Dirt. Yeah, I mean they say <laughs> they say V8 in this one. I'm not a car person, but God. there was less car talk in this film than in the other two. Yeah. Cause I like the Paul Walker kind of like, oh yeah, you got six beats on the side of the yeah. road side, I car like, upside yeah. down, flim flam. All right. We'll check how that works with my V8 Hemi juicer whatever oh. the fuck like this one had like none of that nothing I, even any nas yeah the no, nitrous oxide has that not made it to japan yet no it's in there uh, japan invented cars they they pulled you said it yourself they pulled the trigger once but that's once, not once but it didn't give it, me that but you can't do that while needed. you're drifting 
They did. I did see a motorcycle that had two Nazis yes, attached to that it. That was cool. Horribly disappointed that we never saw that, saw that thing, thing in action. Go. Yeah, because you can't you can't drift with Nas. I thought that, the you, little blonde Yakuza dude was going to get onto that motherfucker, and yeah, that would have been that thing was cool. cool. That, that thing was cool. Was cool. I, there were a lot of like set pieces and like the club they go to where they go through like three different yeah, clubs before yeah. they get to the garage. That was fucking cool. Uh huh. Um, I actually did like a lot of the fashion. Like genuinely, I thought it was like pretty. Fun, cool, interesting, mm -hmm. visually very exciting to look at. Yeah. Main guy, his wardrobe, forget it. Tucked in shirt every scene. Oh, and that he looks black awful. Belt. Yeah, he's wearing like gray jeans, a black belt, and, and I, a navy blue shirt. It wasn't like, too long ago. And he's wearing like loafers. I don't know. This, yeah. this movie's only like 14 years old. Yeah, I mean, 2006, it was, it was a very different time. Uh, sure, but, but like at least we're starting to see semblances right. and taste of like, oh, this is fashion that I recognize right. as even being popular still today. And like his look was, again, it was, it was rabbit. He's like Marshall Mathers. Um, yeah. I just he, could not something. Cause he, you know what? It's like little bangs he has, like the little. Yeah. He pushes front. all his like hair Chuck forward. Like Chuck the yeah. goddamn democratic debate. I was like, uh, ugh. Yeah, he has a truck Todd haircut. He does. Where there might be a ponytail in the back and you'll just never know. He's uh, developing a bald spot is his issue because he is 53 years he old. He dresses like, a, he tucks in his t-shirt. He dresses like an old man. He tucked in his t-shirt, two jeans with the belt. I don't know if his shoes at any point, but they were like black filas. Yeah, they were like heavy life loafers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did you check out his colonoscopy badge? Yeah. That was weird. That was weird. I don't know why they put that in there. And the scene um, where he got a pacemaker was like, <laughs> whoa, very yeah. intense. I admire that. That was bold. Uh, he hooked his pacemaker to the car. Okay. That's this is not Crank. Crank. Which Bridget. Uh, those are good movies. I have seen those. Those are good movies. movies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> those are cool movies. Um, Very cool. Those movies are for the boys. But those movies are. They are for the oh, So the many boys. good points in that those movies. But. Uh, Fast and Furious. Great driving. Great, great. Dri I can't get over it. There Their is, little lovebird scene, which I will never understand how they're in like a synchronized drift car it thing. It looks up. so effortless. Every other time they're drifting, the characters are like leaning all the way to the right, all the way left. Yeah. This chick is like one handing. Well, it. she's doing that and he's pressed up against the window, yes, yes. which is pretty cool. And then they're. Maybe because she's just so good at it. Here's my pitch for the universe. Um, because of how those cars just fall in line, it does look like it's a naturally occurring event. It does. So cars are animals, and the, like the, the cars. Interesting. And, you, I mean, and you got you got to tame the beasts. Are yeah. Are when the, you got when you got a hot engine in your fucking ride, baby. You gotta. I hate getting that doing. thing, and you gotta. You gotta tame that animal. This is making me deeply uncomfortable. Mm. But like cars and drive, it, that's what nature is in these yes. universes. Uh, they are stepping into Lightning McQueen. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. So that was just like, you know, the March of the Penguins version. <laughs> they just joined the march. Yeah. Uh, I, the, again, we talked about this, but like the little montage at the end where they like build up that car. Oh, so Very the cool. montages in this movie cool. are Very great. cool. His learning to drift montage with awesome. Asian Statler and Waldorf <laughs> just fishing. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. On the yes. side. Great. The building montage. Yeah, it seems right. like everybody in Tokyo is like, oh, they're racing their cars again. Yeah. Pretty fast. On very busy city streets. Which I mean. Which are pedestrian about, heavy, which is different. Than, yeah, heavy. not But Los if we Angeles. think about like Akira, speed racer, maybe yeah. this is the same kind of fictional world where like Japanese people are like, well, the cars are going to go fast. Yeah, what speed racers do? on a different track though. They're, they're not on city streets. Yeah, but I mean. You know, they're like, yeah. maybe just they're accustomed to it. Like if I saw a game of football yeah. break out in the middle of the street in America, I'd be like, ah, of course, the old, <laughs> the old pig skin. Maybe yeah. it's like that in Japan. So you go, like, yeah, go out in the middle of Sunset Boulevard and then just two dudes go out and just start tossing the football around. <laughs> yes. In my version of America, the that's, Norman Rockwell version. That's of what America. happens. Just all those kids playing stickball in the street that you're driving across. Especially in Hollywood where I live. Of course. If that is true. And I lived in the Fast and Furious uh, universe, I would be terrified of car. If I saw a no. car, I would be running as fast as I could in the opposite direction. No, everybody would move out of Japan. Much like if I saw a wild animal. Okay, I yeah. see where this is. Yeah, this is. But, yeah, up. if I saw like a boar in the wild, I get it. I get uh, it. Is this maybe a commentary like man versus machine? 
Man and the machine. Man, man as the machine. The machine becoming one, becoming family. Family. <laughs> and I love, oh, I love that the Dom entrance at the end was like literally yeah. set off by the word family. Yeah. They like fucking cued him. I was so excited for, I said that before, but I was so oh excited for you at that point. Oh man, that was so cool. Yeah. I can't get over it. It's like literally every thing about this movie that I was like, oh brother, am I still watching this? Was like made worth it at like yeah. the last possible. It was like, it was the prestige. Yeah. It was the prestige. It uh it was great cuz yeah, well, when you were watching with the franchise, you're watching these movies and being like, is it going to be Fast and Furious ever again? Yeah. Like you you never And I wouldn't mind if they were all anthology films. Yeah. I do. Okay, so I don't know anything about the Fast and Furious, but like I do know like Brian and Dom team up again. Yeah. Like I like I know that like sure. there are recurring cast members in these yes. movies now. You've seen billboards. Yes. For these movies. Yeah, I can't not see them. Yeah. Uh which shocks me. That's why that's why it shocks me what you know and don't know why it confuses me so much. Yeah, here's the thing. This is knowledge I maybe had at one point, but it wasn't of any value to me, so I just forgot. Just it. left it out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I retained all of it, baby. Uh yeah, not I. Where? By the way, can I say something about Vin Diesel briefly yes. to go back? So in the first episode, um, the episode, I know, uh, I said, I described that Vin Diesel made like a sizzle reel for himself where he was demonstrating like he could play a bunch of different races, whatever. Yeah. Okay. I did not give Vin Diesel the credit he deserves. So I want to go back and give him some credit. Yeah. So I told you when I got here, his real name is Mark Sinclair, which is also a great movie star name. Yes, it is. But Vin Diesel, though, is like the start of the fast. This series, is Vin Diesel. For sure. Yeah. So the movie is actually a short film called Multifacial, and it's brilliant. Vin Diesel, mm. like, made it all himself. The only thing he didn't do was, like, shoot it. Obviously, he couldn't shoot right. it and also, like, be in it. Yeah. Um, and basically, it is semi-autobiographical. It is him, like, as an actor going to different auditions where the um, casting director just assumes, like, well, you know, you're Italian or like, oh, well, you're like, you know, black, you're right. Latino, whatever. And so it's, and in between those auditions, he's talking to his agent about like, dude, I can't do this. And like at one point, like he shows up for a role for like a soap opera. And so the actress he's reading with starts speaking in Spanish. And he's like, oh, I don't actually speak Spanish. And they're like, what? But like, what are you? And so the film itself is actually him making a comment about how it's kind of hard to be ethnically ambiguous because you get pulled into these auditions and you're kind of like, dude, I don't even know if I belong here. Huh. Yes. So a lot smarter than what I gave it credit for. Yeah. Very meta. I would even say maybe ahead of its time vis-a-vis representation and identity in film. Like this is a popular conversation we're having now, but not back in the 90s. Oh, you mean a short film. I thought you meant these movies. No. Like- <laughs> God, no. The first like- movie, the climax is the race war. Forget yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to say, these movies are no, no, very... No, Vin Diesel. And then, this is a follow-up fun fact, Old um, director by the name of Stevie Spielby got a hand of it and another short film that Vin directed and made and wrote a role for him in the movie um, Saving Private Ryan. Oh, wow. So really thrilled to see Vin Diesel now that I know that he's actually a genius. Well, you, you know that he's like a big D&D nerd. And, yes, I do yeah. know that. Yeah. The, I mean, he also might be an asshole. Yes. I know him and The Rock have a lot of uh, mm, testosterone kind of battles. Yeah. Got uh, it, got it. But I would like to sit down with if Vin, if you're listening, you're welcome to come on the show. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> I have so many questions. Um, I have no answers. I, I would just be squealing in the background. My, my only spoiler is that Han dies, and that was like, from introduction to him blowing up was like 40 minutes. yeah. We don't get enough of, and he is a great character. Because I thought he was in it more. And I thought he died like really tragically. Thus the justice for Han. I mean, is he did blow up. I mean, it is a shocking death. And certainly, I mean, just from seeing this movie, maybe premature. Because he was a cool guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah, w- one of the people you want to stick with. Uh, and. But no, he. Um, he slowed him. Yeah, pretty violently. Because uh, by I, the way, the first time a car has finally burst into flames in this franchise, if I'm not mistaken, no, in the first movie, do you not remember that really cool explosion outside of that uh, pagoda? Excuse uh, me. Yeah. What is the word that you just used? 
<laughs> Do you really fold pagoda? Yeah. Out of your ass. No, that's what it was. Yes. No, I, I remember now. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I just can't believe that's, I mean, you're right. But yeah. you just, I didn't expect you to slam that down. I don't well, know. I know stuff. Well, uh, clearly you know more about the Fast and the Furious because uh, I was yeah, and the, thrown and for the, a loop. Yeah. I feel like I have whiplash. Well, I was racing in those cars. What I think is an interesting thing, because you see so many car crashes in, this, in these movies that you're like, that's deadly, but they're going to walk away. They're going to be yes. fine. The way it's shot, you're like, they're so like, yes, yeah. with normal rules, it's deadly, but not in, this, in, the not, not in these rules. With the Han crash, that I the thought way, he was fine. I, oh, you thought he was fine. Well, because I even said out loud, like, this can't be where Han dies. Well, you said that. So there's something where you knew, like, oh, this one. But it was more like. Could be deadly. It could be. But or it was, was kind of more like, oh, uh, I literally. Had there would the be consequences in, to that at the yeah, very I least. I thought at the moment it was going to be like one of those things where, like, they barely get him out. And then all of a sudden, like, a Yakuza member comes up and, like, right. pops him. Well, it's just clear in the way that that one is shot that there. This is the first car crash we see where there are actual consequences to it. True, and I, I kind of want to go back and look at that scene and be like, okay, why is like how did they? We've seen a million car crashes for real, grisly, grisly car crashes that were like, oh, we're fine. It's I'm a telling scratch. you, the this two one, cars at the top of the movie should be absolutely yeah. devastated. There should be. Oh, they, pools they, of blood. They should be, but the way they're shot in like such a light, fun way, you're like. I did fine. see the airbags deploy, but I was like, that would break their necks. Yeah, the well, airbag is supposed to, yes, yeah, save your life, but it, there's also no guarantee that you're not going to break like your rib cages. Is that still because I mean that's such a thing in the Fast and Furious universe that like you can't hurt a car and you can't hurt a person in a car um, if if they're family. Uh, yeah, that's true. Is that is that still something that remains shocking to you? Like every time you see it, I guess I shouldn't be so shocked. But some of these crashes are fucking violent. Like it's yeah, they're pretty brutal. Yeah. I also commend this movie though. Only basically like two characters ever wield guns, which yeah. you know in the America Fast and Furious is oh they're pulling out guns left gun, and right. That goddamn guy in the last movie, Rome. Had a gun like oh, way yeah. from in Miami, and he is like literally on probation. Yeah, he's literally under yeah. house arrest. A lot less guns. You know, the but when Yakuza, Takashi, when Takashi pulled out the gun, it was it's like, shocking. Oh, whoa, yeah, yeah. It, it's really shocking. That is a cool, yeah, because the only two people in this movie yeah, have Takashi guns. has a gun, and then, and then the, the dad Navy, has a gun. Yeah. But yeah, he is a he, member of the U.S. military, so yeah. like no shit, he's got a gun. Yeah, uh, the only like violence we get are again grizzly car wrecks yeah that aren't really that violent and these ass yeah pretty bad. and then yeah we have but a he fist fight pretty fast he also gets spit in the face and kind of just like brushes it off which i mean probably because he knows he can't beat those guys in a fight he, but it is a little bit like dude that is major disrespect um yes and go back and watch the scene that guy spit what looked like a rock at the dude. Yeah, like it was it very bounced intense. off. It spit. You yeah, heard it. There was a sound effect, and it bounced off his face. Yeah, it was a pretty And he turns gross. around, and it's dry. I'm like, do you? It looked. He has like bronchitis or strep throat or something. Yeah, he was on the tail end I know, of getting rid of a cold. Of it out, if someone actually spit on Bow Wow, he would not just be like, "Yo, are you okay, man?" Like, no, that was a huge sign of yeah. disrespect. Major. Uh, and I, there's no. It's always. It's so baffling to me. We never got a Bow Wow song out of these movies. I was j- literally had the thought, because I was thinking about the terrible Too Fast, Too Furious song compared to this awesome song. Yeah. It's like Ludacris is in the movie and then got to do the song. Bow Wow, yeah. maybe he has a song well, like Ja on the Rule soundtrack. in the first movie also doesn't do a song. Well, probably because we don't want a song from Ja Rule. You shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do in that time. Uh, in that year, absolutely. I would take one now. <laughs> What's my mother? Uh, <laughs> uh, I I was going to make yeah. a point about... Yeah, Bow Wow? I don't know if it was going to be about Bow Wow. I guess it doesn't. The songs? Really mad. It, this is just like... I don't even know if I liked or disliked this movie just because it is such a departure from what I was expecting. Yeah. I I, I, I guess on the whole, I would say No. Because really, the first, like, it is, this is, okay, this is what I was going to mm-hmm. say. The first two major conflicts of the film, um, not Paul Walker, Eminem, gets into beef with, like, one of the bad boys because he's hot for their girlfriend. 
Like that happens in America and then that immediately happens with DK. Yeah, this guy learns no lessons. None. He, he should be in jail. Well, he's you severely can, concussed. You so. cannot just extradite a criminal to another country and like face absolutely zero consequences. He drove through a fucking frame of a house. They owe restitutions to that comp, like to this landlord and to the developers. Sarah, um, you're gonna. I know, I know. You're gonna have to get over property damage. I know. Uh, also, in these movies, I know. Uh, I know. It is. I see what they've done with the cars. They have no insurance on these cars. Uh, there, there is absolutely well, yeah. no way. The premiums would be insane. Uh, they can't get car insurance. No. Uh, but I w- also the bad guys in this movie are the Yakuza. I mean, of course. Well, because what else would they be? What else would they be? Uh, yeah, I mean, it is fun. I mean, yeah, part of the fun in the these movies is how ridiculous they get. Sure. Um, with, you know, what cars can supposedly do and, you know, what they can pull off. And this movie is like such a... I mean, we've seen some crazy stuff. This movie is such a, like, incre- uh, up of the ante. It definitely is. They're flirting with, like, okay, now that we have drifting. Yeah. Like, how? Because you're right. The, the, like, driving choreography is stunning. stunning. It's incredible. Yeah. Stunning. So it is kind of cool to see, like, where do they go from yeah. here? Uh, yeah. Because so- these cars are now going extremely fast. And they are furious. They're getting angrier and angrier. Angry. The fast and the irate. Seriously. Um, yeah. So now that you've seen this, what are your rankings? I don't. I it's don't, hard. This is, this is I hard. Might ha- I might have to like sit on this one because yeah. like instinctively right now, I want to say this is the bottom. Okay. But I don't think it's really fair to the movie because I it just didn't like my expect. It didn't. It did not. Not me and my expectations. Right. My expectations were wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. completely misguided. It, it tossed them out the window. So, I think for now, it is. I preferred the first two to this one. Yeah. But out of fairness to the movie, because, like, it is not, it wasn't like hard to watch. It was no. just like an enjoyable, right. fun movie with like cool sequences. It's just like, I'm going to need to see like maybe the bigger picture for sure. Yeah. These, I was interested in your take cause this is a, a confusing moment in the franchise. So, so leaving you here and I is get interesting. If they're going to do like an anthology thing that checks out, but putting Paul Walker in too fast, too furious and adding that continuation from, from the first film. Right. Makes it hard to then do this. Up until Dom shows up, and then I'm fucking stoked. Right. It it is weird. <laughs> it's almost like these are the the worst three movies you can start with back okay. to back to back because you get you're introduced to one thing, and knowing and knowing that it's a franchise, and knowing and having seen billboards at least, you're right. like, this is what the franchise is. Well, because this is what it is now in 2020. Right. And then you see two, which feels like a spinoff film. Yeah. In a way where you or have one it's character. Like James Bond, but right. it's Brian O'Connor. Exactly. Yeah. Or you have one character. And so you can kind of see where it goes franchise wise. And then you get three, which is a whole new ball game. Yeah. Uh, and almost has nothing to do with the other ones. I like jokingly refer to it as a Star Wars story, but even like Rogue One and Solo are like. Yeah. You can plug them in. Right. There, well, yeah, because there's no timeline to these movies. <laughs> Clearly. I mean, there is in that they date themselves via technology. Oh, yeah, but, for sure. For sure. Uh, All of the uh, flip phone usage in but this yeah, movie Star was, Wars, yeah. it was adorable. It was very it was charming. Cute. Yeah, uh, They this, turned this their could flip be phones. A pre- this could be a prequel to, like, mm-hmm. the first one and the second one. No, I guess not, because Dom at the end there. Yeah. We'll blow that. But um, if you cut the Dom scene, okay, because there was a minute there that I thought the main character of this movie was Paul Walker in a flashback. Oh yeah. Just briefly. I was like, wait a second. This could be one of those openings where it's actually a flashback. No, no, that was just another guy. And this it is, is not, you movie. threw out that theory to me early on. And I was like, this you'll is figure like, it out. This is like the fast and the furious presents Tokyo drift. What do they call yeah. Calvin Chubbs? <laughs> Calvin and Chubbs. <laughs> they call. If anyone's keeping tally Shubbs of what, <laughs> 
<laughs> what are the they called? Rock Pop- and Jason Statham. What? What are they? Hobbs and Shaw. I think they called it like the Fast and the Furious presents Hobbs yes. and Shaw, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think this would make more sense as like the Fast and the Furious presents Tokyo Drift. That is probably true. And I'm saying this only seeing these three movies, so like I maybe I'm wrong. No, no, that 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 checks out. I don't out. mind that this strays away from everything else. Right. Now that I've seen it. Right. But as I was getting into it, I was like, oh shit. Right. Where are my friends? Where are my buddies? Yeah. And I think. Where's where's the crew? I mean. The team. For obvious reasons, this is a controversial one because one, it's just a weird, it's a real weird movie. It is a weird movie. In general, like outside of the context of the franchise, it's strange. um, To say the least. Which is part of the reason why I love it. But uh, it's very strange. But in the context of the franchise, it's even weirder because you're like, where where are we going? What is happening in this universe? And do I ever see my friends again? The The only thing I knew without a shadow of a doubt was they were in Tokyo. <laughs> yep. I got that. And they weren't even in Tokyo for Which, the whole time. Which, by the way, you could make an argument that the plot, this whole film occurs in seven days. <laughs> Probably. Because he drifts on the... First full day he's in Japan, second night that he's there. Yeah, he he tries to. Yeah. Where, where Bow like Wow's just like, hey, get the emergency brake and you turn and throw it in. Yeah, can you give me 30 seconds? And this guy's fucking. What a hubristic asshole. Oh my God. I, uh, but uh, America, uh, he's a stand in for us. You know? I literally, he sounded like he had dip in his mouth the entire movie. Just, oh, like, he's, yeah. just like very like. You know, I understood the sound- Japanese in this film better than I understood him. Quite literally. Quite literally. Uh, and I don't speak a lick of Japanese. As both someone who is Japanese and someone who is Southern, I was more <laughs> offended by how the Southerner was portrayed. Yeah. <laughs> I took more of I was like, hold on, no, wait, wait a second. Yeah, when he talks it's about... like the Japanese things. They look cool, sleek, smart, yeah. sexy, interesting. It's like, oh, that's nice. This guy is representing Americans poorly. Yeah, when they went on their vending machine food date and he was like, I don't have to put up ketchup on this. Uh, and was like, but he was expertly using chopsticks. He was doing a very good job. I was yeah. surprised and that we I didn't thought, get a scene of him trying to use it like a fork. And you know what? I could have pegged this movie for one of those movies that uh-huh. I have a scene where it's like, how do you use these sticks? You know, back in America, we use forks and knives. Like, shut yeah. the fuck up. And they show that beautiful lunch that they have in Japanese high schools. Oh, like, yeah, it was cafeteria. disgusting. Yeah. And it was like, they have a sushi bar. No, that yeah, looks... Yeah, it, like, it looked simply gourmet. It was gorgeous, yeah. Uh, but, hey, that was Tokyo Drift 3. Um, <laughs> Tokyo Drift 3. Tokyo Drift 3. That is Fast and Furious 3, colon, to- Tokyo Drift. How many vrooms? <laughs> How many rooms? Yeah, how many rooms does this God, get? it was so hard to say right now because I gave the other one two stars. Uh-huh. And I feel like... But now you're warming up to the series a little bit. Your feet are wet. Yeah, I feel like I also want to give this one two stars. Really? so high, though. But also, I don't it know. It seems high? I think so. But again, like, I'm disappointed. Because I did not get what I thought I was going to get. That's yeah. why it's hard for me to... I was concerned about whether I should tell you or not. No, I'm glad I discussed... It was yeah. honestly fun to watch it with like... Like completely yeah. being blown away at every single turn. Well, that was honestly a lot of fun. At the very least, you saw Cool Driving. And I saw Vin Diesel. And you saw Dom. Yeah, the and end... Dom. That end excitement I is... I was domed. Yeah. I like being domed. Dom smacked. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know. Get back to me on this ranking and uh, Vroom's question. Cause, um, yeah, because I, I don't want to be unfair to the movie. Because I think I give this a a three and a half rooms. That is very gentlemanly of you. I, I do like this movie. It's a weird one. I like it. There's good driving. I get it. I get it. That's why I, I rewatched The Phantom Menace. There's good driving and... I have a longer argument to be made about I'll it. I'll listen to your episode. Uh, now that I've watched this, I actually can listen to that episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Check out our friends at Gamefully Unemployed. <laughs> Just a free plug there. Yeah. Uh, they're good people. You can um, check out at our Small Beans Patreon using Gamefully Unemployed 15 for 15% off. No, I don't know. <laughs> they don't listen to us. <laughs> no, and Patreon does not operate like that. <laughs> no, not at all. But uh, I mean, keep listening to us. Yeah, I mean, we're join us for four next time. We're going into fast four. And I predictions on that. 
Yeah, I, I would ask you, but it seems like you're I pretty. Hope, I hope Paul and Vin are in it. I hope to see Michelle Rodriguez. I think that'd be cool. I have a feeling maybe we're going to see like a little ludicrous. Okay. I feel like if I, I don't know anything about the numbers, the reception of these movies, whatever. Mm -hmm. It does feel like to me, given what I've seen the franchise kind of become now, it seems like maybe this movie came out, had some mixed receptions and the studio got back together and they're like, okay, we need to put this thing, pun intended, back on track. I will admit the other thing I do know about Fast and Furious and the rest of them is that Vin Diesel does become a producer. Okay. <laughs> Which I kind of assumed he was a producer of all of them, actually. I mean, I know he wasn't really famous for the first. Very true. One yet. Um, but yeah, so it seems like you're you're putting your money my, on. My We're back to the family. Yeah, my prediction is that this one, again, kind of mixed reviews. And it's like, all right, let's go back to what makes... I mean, literally, this right. next movie is called Fast and Furious. Yeah. They dropped the these. Yep. Dropped the subheadings. Yep. No taglines. Just clean and simple, fast and furious. Maybe we're back in LA. And I can't tell you anything more than that. Well, wow. Good. I hope I get to experience it like I experienced this. <laughs> yeah. So uh so keep keep listening. We'll do four next and uh you know, keep subscribing to Patreon. Of course. I'll get uh, because I must say for listening. And, yeah. Um, uh, sayonara. You, yeah. And go to Small Beans on iTunes. Uh, give us a rating. Give us a comment. Helps out a lot. Yes. Uh, see ya. See you next time. This has been a Small Beans endeavor. We're a bunch of pals who make podcasts, sketches, music, web series, and movies. The Beans always have new ideas percolating, so make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash smallbeans. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash smallbeans, where you can browse all of our current and past content, see what we've got planned in the future, and learn how your support can help the Small Beans grow into huge, giant monster beans. If you enjoyed this content module, please like, rate, subscribe, or tell a friend about us. We love you.